Where do you think we are in the cycle at the moment? Yeah, we're nowhere near the end of the cycle. We're, <laughs> we're let's say, like a third inning or maybe, maybe like late third inning. So um, we, we will obviously uh, very likely be breaking all-time highs in, in the majors. Uh, if, if we haven't already on Bitcoin, I'm not sure if it sort of touched through or not. But, um, you know, we're at the stage where we're entering price discovery. So price discovery means that we don't really know where the upside kind of risk reward balances. It, it could be, you know, much higher. And so we're in this exciting period where there, there's a lot of trading going on, a lot of volume because the market is not sure where is the equilibrium between um you know, supply and demand, you know, you talk about economics, you have this the traditional thing. It's very, very relevant right now because we have a new new demand uh, coming in from uh, ETFs mainly, right? And so that's starting to also like bring in some retail because they're, they're starting to sniff that there's, there's some opportunities. The demand goes up. And then here's the cool thing about crypto. If you look at coins that have a limited supply that, you know, is like deflationary or potentially, you know, very low in, uh, inflation like Bitcoin has, the supply can get very inelastic. <laughs> and so just some, some increase in, in, uh, in demand can, can make the price move a lot because there's not a lot of people willing to sell, you know, at 65,000, uh, at 70,000. Who knows exactly where, where people's marginal, you know, selling interest comes, but it could be a lot higher. So, uh, you know, I've predicted a, an Ethereum price at the start of the year when we were at 2,000. I said six to 8,000 by end of the year. We're already at four, so uh, <laughs> hopefully, like I haven't. Uh, I thought I was being aggressive, and, and people were were sort of like surprised that I, I was that bullish. But uh, we'll see where things end up, you know. So you said eight thousand, and I guess that's like a ten x from the bottom of uh, of the from the bear market, right? So an, another another interesting aspect that you pointed out is like uh, we're moving fast right now. We're at four thousand. Um, I've seen a few like people um, talking about like this. This cycle is moving faster than expected and faster than previous cycles, and it's going straight up right now, right? So, do you think the the cycles from now forward, or even just particularly this cycle, is is going to be shorter, faster, aggressive than than the previous ones? I think every every cycle is different, completely unique to its environment. Um, I call, you know, this could potentially be the largest cycle in terms of the the starting point of, the, of you know, the global market cap and the ending point. Um, I don't think we'll have another one like it because this potentially could be the cycle where, you know, the large real money, right? Like not the little crypto market caps that we're playing with, but the real, you know, trillion dollar things, uh, sovereign wealth funds, these types of things. If this is the cycle that they potentially are sort of FOMO'd in, which is looking possible, this could be the largest cycle and it'll give it a unique flavor. Um, you know, not every asset will perform well, but some that are obvious, you know, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you know, some, some other ones will, will potentially do very well. Do you think the um, sort of injection of like traditional TradFi boomer money entering like crypto, is it going to make crypto markets more stagnant, slow and boring going forward? Do you think this is going to be the last like big, massive, crazy cycle? I think, you know, by the time we get to gold, um, we are many years away from that kind of boring, stagnant, oh, it moved 1%, like, okay, cool. Um, we're nowhere near that. I'm not going to even think about when that's going to happen because I can't even see it in the horizon. It will eventually potentially happen for, you know, something like Bitcoin, you know, in many years, right? It will happen. Uh, once there's no price discovery to really be done and it's sort of been figured out what this thing is worth. But um, we are <laughs> miles away from that. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about that right now, Alpia. Yeah. Do you have any price predictions for this cycle? Yeah, I'm 68K. Um, you know, Bitcoin, it, it's looking like we'll, we'll, we'll break 100. Uh, I don't know exactly where it ends up. So I um, can't really give as good an estimate on Bitcoin. I feel like that's, uh, that has a, a tail where, you know, I think on average ETH will outperform Bitcoin this year, but there's a tail scenario where like Bitcoin has like a very, very blue chip mainstream uh, adoption by, you know, the Qatari government or something that, you know, changes the ball game and then uh, Bitcoin will outperform. So, um, 
the distribution is quite different for Bitcoin. There's a there's a fat tail, you could you could say, on the right side, and so um, it's hard to predict. Yeah, so I don't think Ethereum is quite there in terms of uh, you know a game changing, um, you know, new player starting to buy Ethereum. I think the first one that will potentially have like a, a nation state, not El Salvador, but like you know a very very wealthy one, uh, come in is is quite high especially you know some of the middle eastern states have been looking at it quite closely already um there could be like a game changer through uh you know like a u.s financial institution that starts to put bitcoin into um you know like fixed etf we, we've seen a little hints of that happening in canada i think with fidelity like some of their uh, products have like a two three percent crypto allocation if you get bitcoin into uh you know like a mainstream allocation for like a BlackRock um, size of uh, company, that can be a game changer that creates a, a tail, like a fat sort of right tail, which means like there's a probability of an explosive Bitcoin reaction. Um, I think eventually ETH might have that as well, but you know, it, it's in a different stage. Do you have an expectation on where, where the bull cycle sort of ends and we get, get into another bear? Um, you know, another bear is inevitable. As we all know, people will always get overexcited in crypto and, and, you know, already, even though we're early on, I said third inning, we're having dog coins and, um, random AI coins that are just completely disconnected from real world valuation. So when I say real world, you know, we're looking at some of the largest, you know, most legitimate companies in the world, like open AI, you know, marking at 80 billion, then you have like WorldCoin marking at like 90 billion. These things don't make any sense. So, uh, you know, we're in a bubble in some things already, you could say. Um, so the inevitable bear market, you know, uh, hard, to, hard to say, like if, if new money keeps coming in on, from the traditional side, it can extend the market quite, quite far. But like I said at the beginning, we may have quite a divergence between um, you know, how some things behave. And we've even seen that already this cycle. There's there's many days where something will be green and then everything else is red. While, you know, in the past, everything had the same beta. 